Hi guys, I'm back with another arcade repair video and today we are going to look uh, at this game which is Phoenix made in 1980 by a company called Amstar and uh, which was manufactured by a company uh, called Century and uh, well you can see uh, the game running on MAME uh, here on my PC I do actually uh, have fond memories of the game I didn't really play it um, uh, in the arcade uh, when I was a child, but I played the um, home uh, console version of the game on my Atari 2600 and I really liked it. So uh, when I uh, stumbled across an eBay auction of some dead Phoenix PCBs, I thought it would be fun to try a uh, repair of the game and uh, play the arcade version. Well, here you can see the um, auction I, I was referring to. I actually bought this big lot of Century Phoenix arcade game PCBs for parts not working. And as you can see on the picture, it's kind of a bad quality, but it's 12 PCBs laid out uh, in the dirt in front of the house, uh, <laughs> actually. And uh, well, I paid uh, 200 bucks for those 12 PCBs. And I thought uh, it would be fun to see <laughs> what problems those PCBs might have. And it would be interesting uh, to see how many working game boards we actually get out of this lot. The package actually already arrived uh, from the US and I have the PCBs laid out on the floor here. And uh, well, it's 12 PCBs and uh, some uh, connectors to hook the PCBs up. And um, what I noticed uh, at first is that there's actually, there's two types uh, of boards in this set. Uh, one complete game of Phoenix consists of two boards. One is called the CPU board and one, the other one is called the logic board. So you need a CPU board and logic board for a complete Phoenix. The CPU board is uh, looks like this. It's the one with the edge connector, where you uh, hook up the uh, board to the um, cabinet. And one uh, doesn't have an ed edge connector. It only has those two connectors which connect it to the CPU board. And this one is called the logic board. And there's a certain imbalance actually, because we only have four uh, logic boards, but we have eight CPU boards. So unfortunately, most uh, the most that we can get out of this lot, at least, is four working games. But nevertheless, I would say if we got uh, four games uh, out of this lot, that still would be quite amazing. Another thing that I noticed is that there's there seem to be different versions. Um, of the CPU uh, PCB, as you can see here, the um, if you look at those PCBs closely, they are actually similar but not identical. And this also goes for for the um, logic boards, as seen here. The boards uh, next to each other they are similar, but they are not really completely identical. You know, the amount of uh, chips on the boards are the same. Uh, regarding the relation of the EPROMs uh, in, in relation to the memory chips and logic chips, but they seem to be slightly different, uh, have a different arrangement, so to say. Uh, they, I, I thought maybe one is a bootleg, the other one isn't, but we can see like the Century uh, company mark on this PCB and on the other one uh, there's also some uh, marking of the company which looks legit, so I thought uh, at first maybe there's two different revisions of the game where they use different board layouts for whatever reason. But browsing, uh, browsing the web and uh, at the end I found out that is, this is actually a, a different game. You know, the bright uh, green PCBs belong to a different game, a game called Pleiades, which was also released by Century, which I think was a successor to the uh, Phoenix game. It came out... Uh, after Phoenix came out, one or two years later. 
And uh, well, as it turns out, even though the auction didn't say anything about that, it just stated that this is Phoenix PCB parts. But uh, we have, uh, at, uh, if we look at the uh, complete uh, lot, we have two Pleiades um, um, CPU PCBs, and we have two Pleiades uh, logic boards. We have two Phoenix logic boards, and we have a total of six Phoenix CPU boards. So. Uh, we could manage to get two uh, games of F Phoenix and two games of Pleiades uh, at best out of this lot. So where do we start uh, our repair now? I think we'll start with Phoenix because that is what we came for. And um, well, the eBay auction stated that all of the of those PCBs are not working and that it is very certain that no combination of PCBs here, whatever, will produce instantly a working game. That what's, that's what the auction said uh, explicitly. So the, the a way to start, uh, I would say, is to take two boards which fit together and which uh, kind of make... Uh, uh, kind of healthy impression <laughs> on the first lens and see if we get them to work and so I thought we could use maybe this logic PCB which should be a Phoenix PCB and which has the advantage that it is completely uh, populated with uh, ROM chips at least the other logic PCB we have is this one over here which is missing the uh, program ROMs I think so we will take this one and as a <clears throat> as a CPU PCB, I was uh, thinking to take this one uh, right here because it has a missing chip here, which is the main CPU. But I think we can take this from any other uh, of the boards. I would like to start with this PCB anyway because uh, firstly, it's it's an original PCB, and there's a certain sticker on the PCB. Uh, and this PCB obviously has been in service at uh, TNT Amusements, which is an American company uh, on the East Coast uh, in the United States. And the interesting thing is, uh, this, this sticker here doesn't really say what they did to the board, but it's, it, it has a date, which is September 2020. And that is not too long ago. So maybe in September 2020 this PCB was working because I would just presume that they wouldn't make uh, put a sticker like this on the PCB to uh, then throw it in the parts bin or, or something. It, it probably was uh, good and working at that point. So maybe we can use this CPU PCB together with this complete logic PCB. Put a uh, uh, Intel 8085 in the socket and see what we just see what we get. Okay, so I got those two boards on my test bench, connected them which each, uh, with each other and connected it to my uh, test setup here. I put this uh, CPU into the CPU board which I took from this, uh, <coughs> this other CPU board with, which I decided to use uh, for parts. It was missing some parts already and it has some serious hackery going on right here, which I don't really um, like that much. Uh, these cables were soldered to the uh, CPU's legs, so I unsoldered these. And this will go into the parts box for the uh, other repairs, I think. And um, yeah, with the CPU in place, um, I uh, already actually tried what happens and uh, I, I will turn it on for you now. And uh, as you can see, the first uh, copy of the game is actually already running, which of course is amazing. So that was very easy. Um, I doubt that the other uh, PCBs uh, will be that easy to repair uh, really, but uh, it is uh, at this point, it's very, very good to have a working combination of boards. So now we can uh, <clears throat> look at the other boards. We can take uh, a different um, CPU board, for instance, combine it with this logic board over here. And as we know that this logic board is working, if there's a problem with the game, 
we know that we have to look for the problem on the CPU board, which makes it much easier. So this is a stroke of good luck. First PCB already make, uh, working, next one coming up. So the next board we're going to look at uh, is this uh, CPU board. Um, it has had some uh, chips missing, <coughs> which were those two. These are, I assume, these are kind of uh, pallet uh, proms, <coughs> which I found out looking at the uh, manual. I took this uh, from the uh, scrap uh, PCB, and um, so this PCB is now complete. It looks to be original also. It has a sticker which says bad blue screen, uh, and it has some hackery, unfortunately, going on uh, on the uh, solder side of the PCB, which I will leave on for now. And we will just hook it up for the moment and see what happens. Okay, so I hooked up this uh, different CPU PCB and uh, we don't get a running game this time. We hear some endless uh, squealing sound from the uh, speakers and we have a black screen. So uh, this isn't working too well at the moment. Uh, the game isn't running blind also. So if I use any of the controls, uh, the sound doesn't really change or the screen doesn't really change. So. There's two problems, I think, uh, going on at the moment. First uh, problem is the the game isn't really running, uh, as far as uh, we can tell. So there might be a, a problem with the CPU, or the CPU executing the program. Uh, we will uh, have to look into that, uh, maybe lo using the uh, logic probe. And second problem is, um, there should be also some issue with uh, the graphics uh, circuit because if you had a, 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 an arcade game which has a CPU problem, you wouldn't, uh, or only a CPU problem, let's say, you wouldn't really expect to, uh, you wouldn't really expect it to show a black screen. You would uh, rather expect it to show garbage on the screen. That's a, a huge difference because um, the uh, circuitry generating the uh, picture on the monitor is usually uh, completely separated from the CPU. As it has nothing to do with the CPU. It normally accesses some kind of screen RAM and uses graphical data from some EEPROMs, for instance, to draw the graphics on the screen, but it is not dependent on the CPU. It's a completely separate circuit. So if the CPU fails, you should get garbage on the screen and um, the game is not running. If the uh, graphic circuitry has a problem, you might get a black screen, but the game might still be running. Um, but uh, as we don't have either of those uh, features here at the moment, I think there is at least uh, two problems. One with the CPU and second problem with the video output circuitry. Okay, so what I did now is um, to check the CPU. I hooked up my uh, logic probe to the circuit. And um, I already looked at the... Um, at the legs of the CPU and what I found is actually um, that there's activity on all the address and data lines, that there's a clock signal of course, uh, that the reset signal is okay and there is nothing much going on on any interrupt channels or anything. So you would think that this CPU is actually running some sort of program at the moment. I don't know why this doesn't result in a, <clears throat> in a playing game, but uh, that is um, all we can uh, tell using the uh, logic probe at the moment. Um, there is no very basic uh, problem like missing power or missing reset or missing clock 
or what could actually be always uh, the problem if the CPU isn't working properly. I also uh, made sure that it's not a problem with the CPU itself. I just uh, used the one from the uh, working CPU board. So uh, we're kind of stuck here with this lead. What we could do next is actually hook up the Fluke, which is a um, ancient uh, microprocessor troubleshooting device. You put the Fluke uh, into the socket where the CPU goes, and then you can troubleshoot uh, all, pro all kinds of problems uh, with the board. You can look at uh, problems with address lines, with data lines, um, you can see if there's any shorts, you can make some RAM and ROM tests, you can try to read the RAM, compare checksums, try to write uh, some RAM, try to read it back, etc, etc. Very nice tool and this would actually be required to further look into uh, the issue here. But as I don't really have the fluke at hand at the moment, I would suggest we just switch over to our second lead, uh, the video uh, display problem. And maybe if we are lucky, we can fix that more easily. And uh, also if we get something on the screen, we might be actually uh, able to tell what might be going on with the CPU. So let's actually look at our second lead then. Okay, and how can we now start with the troubleshooting of the video circuit? Well. As always, this video is supposed to help you with your troubleshootings, so I'll try to go uh, through everything step by step, even if it takes uh, a longer while. So what you could do is start at a point in the circuit where you can actually see uh, a manifestation of the problem that you're having with the game in the signal of the logic probe. and. Uh, uh, what I'm uh, what I'm trying to say here is that you could uh, at first check where do the uh, RGB signals on the in the circuit come from, and uh, we can see uh, the RGB outputs here, and they are coming from this IC with which is IC forty seven, and they are supposed to come from pins two, four, and six. So we could look at uh, this IC, which is this guy over here, and uh, we look at pin two is low all the time, pin 4 is low all the time, pin 6 is low all the time. So this means, well, according to uh, fitting to the black screen, uh, those signals are all zero continuously. So that is the problem that we're having with, with the video output. So the next uh, step, uh, the next step would now be to trace this black video signal back to its origin. So the next question would be, where is uh, this IC, if it is output, supposed to output the RGB signals and doesn't, based on what information is he outputting the data? So what are the inputs of the IC? And we can see that, for instance, pin 1, 3, and 6 are inputs for the uh, IC. And we can see that one, three, and five, excuse me, one, three, and five are low too. So this IC doesn't get any information, so it doesn't output any information. So I don't think there really is a problem with this IC, but maybe with the IC that is sending its information to this guy. So again, we're going one step back. So going back, um, we could look at these ICs over here, which provide uh, the signal to the uh, to the IC we just checked, or we could skip those even and uh, straight uh, look at this uh, IC here because it seems to be providing the signals for both of those ICs, which are uh, on their behalf forwarding signals um, to the IC which is outputting the RGB. So we could look at the outputs of this IC32, which would be, for example, 2, 5, and 7. Mm. 2 is low, 
three, four, five is low, six, seven. Okay, outputs here are also low. Okay, looking at the input pins of this IC32, we can see that there's some activity actually. So we do have inputs. Um, yeah, but no outputs over here. So maybe this IC does have a problem. Um, it appears to be um, a multiplexer, I would say, uh, which has um, six inputs, six outputs, and a clock and a clear signal. So next step would be to look at those signals, clock signal, would be pin nine. So clock signal is there. Um, and pin one should be clear signal. Okay, so this is low permanently, which actually explains why the outputs are low all the time. If this is grounded all the time, then the multiplexer will actually clear all its outputs and put all its outputs to zero. That is very interesting. Where does the clear signal come from? It's not ho hooked to ground, of course, it, but it's also not hooked up to five volts. It appears to be coming from this guy here, which is an OR gate, I think. Um, I see 26, pin six. Okay, and checking this, it's outputting low and pin four and five are the inputs for for this guy. Five is low all the time. Four is low all the time, so it is doing its job. Uh, but again, where are those coming from? Very interesting. So this is coming from IC27. Pin three, for instance, would be here. One of the inputs, 27.3, and the inputs for that are one and two. So let's look. 27.3 is low. Inputs are high and high, both high. Okay, this is a NOR gate, so this is correct. But yeah, the inputs to this guy are coming from some other circuitry, maybe from the uh, logic board. These are the uh, vertical line signals. This is actually very interesting. Okay, so uh, let's look at the second page of the schematics for the um, for the uh, logic board. Okay, we have the second page of schematics here, and uh, we can see that the vertical position signal is actually generated on the logic board. Um, it's kind of interesting that those signals aren't working because we know that the logic board is working and doesn't have a problem. But uh, we'll just continue on and uh, trace back the problem. So uh, we have the uh, vertical position bits over here. This is telling the game or the video output circuit on which position on the screen it is currently situated. And by those signals, and it can decide which uh, part of the video it uh, needs to display, of course, uh, for the current screen position. So, and the vertical signals are coming from, uh, I think those are shift uh, registers, uh, uh, probably. Um, so, this is working as an 8-bit counter, these uh, ICs together. 
Um, well, and let's uh, look at the um, outputs. Uh, for instance, we have IC12, which has 11, 12, 13, 14. Mm, IC12 is right here. 9, 10, 11. This is high. 12, 13, 14. Okay, those aren't moving actually. If that is the case, we should look at the input clock, so to speak, which should be pin 2 for both of them. It's this signal right here. Uh, this is very interesting. Okay, I see 12. Mm, pin 2, what does it say? Is it floating? No, it's actually it's high. It's high all the time, but that's no. But that should be actually um, an alternating signal. This uh, needs to be some kind of clock signal. Otherwise, uh, those counters won't count the vertical position. Okay, so we have to check where this uh, clock signal for the vertical counters is actually coming from. Yeah, and as it turns out, it is actually coming from, uh, again, from the CPU board. So we have to switch back on connector 2, pin 11 of the uh, connectors, which are connecting the two boards together. 211 is right here. It is coming from... I see 23 pin 8 on the CPU board. Interesting. Okay, and that is right here. Pin 8 would be here. So, okay, no clock signal, just the high signal that we also saw. Okay, that makes all makes sense so far because we are now back on the CPU PCB with a problem. So, the problem seems to originate on the CPU PCB, seems to be forwarded to the logic PCB, uh, which then doesn't work properly, and the uh, signals from the logic PCB, which are coming back to the CPU PCB, aren't adequate uh, as well as a consequence. So, okay, let's, let's just follow back the chain. Okay, and now the... Um, the input clock is coming from this IC30, which is a flip-flop, which is getting input from pin on pins two and three for um, uh, data and clock lines. And output is uh, line number, pin number six. So IC30. Two and three are the inputs, so let's take a look. Okay, so I'm now at, I'm at IC30, pins two and three, and they both have a wiggling signal. Uh, and again, they are the input for... <clears throat> IC30, which is a flip-flop, um, and uh, in the in this case, with, with uh, inputs 2 and 3, the clock and the data signal both wiggling, uh, we should actually get an output at pin 6, which should be wiggling as well, but it isn't. That is very interesting. Let's look at pin 6 of IC30. Where are we? We're here. So this is permanently high. And this cannot be correct, actually. Those are wiggling data, clock signal. Output is high all the time. Uh, there is no specific circuit connected for clear or anything. So I think we have a culprit. 
By the way, the inputs to this flip-flop are the highest level horizontal signal, which makes total sense because if the game reaches the end of a horizontal line, it will then switch to the next uh, vertical position. So that's, that, that makes complete sense. Uh, but uh, yeah, these, these signals, the horizontal signals, which appear to be okay, by the way, um, are not coming through into this flip-flop and thereby not coming through to the counter. And so all the very vertical line uh, signals aren't counting. And this is probably why we're getting no video output at all. So I think we should replace IC30. Okay, so just uh, double checking everything. Um, there's a clear line, pin one, and a preset line, pin uh, four, which um, are either pulling the output low or setting it uh, to high permanently if those inputs are pulled low. So we look at pin one and pin four of IC30. Pin one is high and pin four is high also. So that is not the cause of the issue. So if data and clock are toggling, uh, clear and preset signals um, are high, then it is not explainable why output six and output five are both stuck, one in low and one in the high state. This one is low, This the other one is high. Yeah. Okay, so I think I will unsolder this IC and maybe check it in my IC test device. First thing I do when I want to uh, unsolder stuff is that I actually put some fresh uh, solder on the pins and then I'm using my trusty um, Echo FR300 to uh, do the unsoldering. So gun has heated up, so let's go, let's check. place the gun on the spot, then I let it sit for a second to uh, actually warm up the solder and then while actually sucking the solder off the PCB, I'm always wiggling around a bit, that way I'll uh, get uh, most all of the solder out of the PCB. So this was the first row of pins. Here's how it looks. Looks okay. So let's go for the second row. Okay, and if it's done right, you can see the second row is completed. You can actually just wiggle a bit on the pins. And you should actually be able to already press them through the holes so I don't know if you can see but they are actually the pins are already uh, gone through the holes okay so let's flip the board over and we should actually be able to just take it out Nicely done. Okay guys, I found my trusty IC tester and um, I actually have two ICs here right now. And that is because 
I not only removed the uh, presumed bad chip from our um, CPU PCB, but also I removed the very same chip from uh, the um, from our parts PCB that I already uh, took the CPU from. Um, probably because we can use this uh, as a replacement later. So, but now it's uh, getting very interesting because I'm now going to test first the replacement one, which uh, the device says pass. So this is a, a working flip-flop IC7474. Okay, now interesting. We have the uh, presumed bad chip from the um, <coughs> from our CPU PCB, putting that in here, testing. Ta -da! And it actually says fail. So that is very good because now we can put this one into the board and see if we get our video back. Okay, so now I replaced uh, the uh, flip-flop IC30. Let's see what we get. Okay. Yeah, looks like we're getting some video. Uh, well, the game doesn't... Uh, appear to be running still and also uh, this doesn't um, really look like the uh, random garbage you would expect if you have a non-working game uh, with an intact uh, video circuit so i think well maybe let's check uh, I see 32. Yes, so that's better. This um, multiplexer has now an intermittent clear signal that was low all the time when we uh, looked at it before. And yeah, the uh, flip flop I see 32 has a wiggling output now, so this is better, but well, we still have uh, some troubleshootings to do, as it seems. Okay, I think I'm kind of uh, st stuck at the moment. I just um, took the uh, working CPU PCB and connected it uh, again, and I, as you can see here, I removed the CPU and I uh, just uh, started it up and um, I just wanted to show you what I'm actually looking for at the moment. If the PCB is working right, you should actually, without even a CPU in the game, you should see that kind of um, garbage. And uh, that is what uh, the other PCB is actually missing, besides the CPU uh, problem that we, are, um, that we are suspecting anyway. Uh, so, well, I just continued uh, probing around on the PCB um, and uh, I found something uh, that is very interesting. Um, on the uh, logic board, which we know is working, there are uh, RAM chips and um, some of these RAM chips uh, actually have to do something uh, with the uh, video memory. Uh, so um, what you would expect is that there's some kind of RAM chip on the board with or without a running CPU that is being read constantly by the circuitry that is generating the picture on the screen because this needs some data source uh, which uh, tells uh, it what to show on the screen. So uh, we do have RAM chips on the logic board and what uh, is very peculiar is that uh, none of these RAM chips are really active. Uh, the RAM chip are selected via a, a certain pin on the chip, which is called the chip select. And if this chip select is uh, pulled low, 
then um, the chip is actually outputting data or uh, if uh, also write enable is selected um, the chip can be written for instance but well yeah all of these uh, chip select lines are high so none of them is actually selected and that really explains why we don't see any garbage because we don't have any output uh, from the video RAM so I will try to trace back why none of the chips is uh, actually being selected I think there's another uh, problem with a basic signal on the PCB uh, which uh, should be uh, actually running those uh, RAM chips well, looking at the schematics, you can see that there's uh, the RAM chips, which are, for instance, uh, those up here and uh, those four up here and also uh, four chips down here. They are being selected by those signals, which are called uh, 101 and 100. And those signals, again, as with the other problem, they are coming from the... Uh, um, CPU PCB I actually I found them right here 100 and 101 they are coming from this gate I tested this gate this gate is okay and uh, they are uh, originating from this uh, flip-flop again and um, in this case uh, Flip-flop normally has two outputs, one output which is called Q and another output which is called inverted Q. So um, if, it, uh, if the flip-flop out, uh, outputs a zero on Q, it will always output a one on not Q, on the not Q output and vice versa. Uh, so uh, not on all flip-flops in the circuit or right, normally only one of the outputs is actually used. In this case, both are used. And that leads to the conclusion that regarding those signals, either the 100 signal, sig uh, 100 signal is supposed to be high, and at the same time the 101 signal is supposed to be low, or vice versa, because they are connected to those two outputs. So none of the RAM chips is selected, which uh, means both of these signals are high. And, uh, you know, tracing them back through these gates to the flip-flop, which is uh, IC37, pin 8 and 9. If we look again with the logic probe, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... Uh, so this is 8, pin 8 is high, uh, and this is pin 9, this is high also. Uh, so that can't be right. A flip-flop shouldn't output a, a value of 1 on the Q and also a value of uh, 1 on the negative Q or not Q output. If it does, this actually uh, makes clear that this uh, flip-flop uh, must be bad. So then, of course, the next logical step would be to replace this flip-flop and as a consequence of that, get um, our video RAM back. So I replaced IC37 uh, and um, well, let's see what we get. Okay, and as it seems, uh, we are now getting garbage. So I can uh, recognize some letters. It's kind of interesting that uh, there's some, I don't know, some issue with the colors going on. But, uh, okay, I would, uh, I would uh, presume that there's actually uh, 
RAM access now. Uh, we could also check the um, the flip flop. Uh, I think it was pin uh, nine and eight of thirty seven. Yes. So we have one high and one low. That is uh, how it uh, is supposed to be. Okay, so maybe we'll uh, just put the CPU back in and uh, check what we get then. Oh, now look at that. Just put the, PC the CPU back in and uh, this other CPU board seems to be running. So no more CPU issue as it seems. Okay, but there's some glitches uh, going on at the bottom here and also on the top here. Well, there's some slight graphics issues still actually out of uh, the, the area of the regular screen, I would say. Hmm, very interesting. But, uh, well, great success so far. We got uh, the game running again. So no distinct CPU problem. It was just a problem uh, caused probably by uh, the CPU not running correctly because it couldn't uh, access any of the memory chips. Well, that's good. Okay, well, uh, thinking about this uh, new problem for a minute, I actually, I think I have a great uh, explanation uh, what could be going on. Um, I just put the game on its side, so reg it's, this is regular CRT orientation. Um, you will understand in a minute why I did so, but I think it's uh, it's all getting a bit, a bit easier to explain. Uh, what is interesting about this graphical problem is that inside of the regular screen of the game, inside the normal screen that you are playing the game in, the graphics are completely correct there is no appears to be no graphical issue whatsoever so this uh, this random garbage here and here um, is actually completely outside of the regular uh, screen area so um, what you could suspect is that um, the game is actually working fine it is drawing uh, its lines. The way it works is uh, the game draws horizontal lines from left to right and if it's uh, at the end of this line it uh, skips on to the next uh, vertical line and starts again like this. And um, what seems to be happening is that when uh, the cathode ray reaches the end of the line uh, the game is running out of valid data to display on the screen because the uh, the line is finished for the game, but um, somehow some random data is being output still, even if the um, cathode ray had, has reached the end of the play field. So that would normally, normally be a situation where the game would want to turn the outputs off and uh, because the array is continuing here, going down here, continuing uh, this short uh, way over here, and then this is position horizontal position zero, and then it will start to draw valid data again, like one, two, three, four, and so on, and so on, and so on. And the horizontal resolution of the game is, um, which you can check in MAME, for instance, or if you want, you can actually count that also. It's uh, 256. You can al also count it because those lines of text, they are each eight pixels high. And if you um, look at the screen for a while, you will uh, see that there's actually 32 uh, lines of text, which would be possible on the screen. So eight by 32 is 256. So after 256 pixels, the graphics should stop, the counter, uh, the position uh, should be reset to zero, next vertical line, and uh, start over again. And the reason, yes, why I turned the screen to before I um, uh, try to explain everything is, 
it always gets confusing with vertical games. If the if the PCB or in the schematics you read about the horizontal position, it is always referring to the horizontal position at a normal screen orientation, at the regular screen orientation, not at the um, 90 degrees uh, turned rotation of the CPU, uh, of the of the monitor. So this is the horizontal position on the in terms of uh, what is uh, uh, called the horizontal position in the schematics. And this is the vertical position in terms of the schematics. Um, it's quite confusing because if you are standing uh, in front of the cabinet and you are playing the game, you would presume that this is um, the vertical position and this, this is the horizontal position. But it's always, as a standard, it's always referring to a CRT tube that is oriented uh, regularly. Okay, so regarding this graphical glitch, I would now assume that somewhere on the PCB there is some circuitry which uh, will want to out uh, to turn off the uh, graphical output if the horizontal position reaches 256. And uh, if the horizontal position reaches 256, that is the time when actually the horizontal signal H9 which is the ninth bit of the horizontal position, turns from 0 to 1. Um, it's as, as easy as, as that. So um, H9 is also the, the maximum horizontal bit that we just saw on the uh, schematic. So if H9 turns from 0 to 1, the game should actually shut off uh, the graphical output until the horizontal position is turn to zero again and the next line is starting. So we should check the schematics for some kind of circuit that is looking at the um, H9 signal and that is maybe shutting some outputs off in case the H9 signal is high. Could be very easy. Let's check. So I was just a bit uh, curious and I looked at the um, IC32 that we dealt with in the beginning of the repair, which was also an IC which was turning off the video. But this does not seem to be how it works because this clear output that we had an issue with has actually not, nothing to do with the um, H9 signal. But we can see the H9 signal is here coming from the... Um, from the uh, logic PCB and the, uh, the signal should be okay because um, the logic PCB as we know is working. So H9 goes into uh, this I think is a decoder and um, the outputs are then going through several gates and at the end we're getting the sync signal out of that. That makes total sense because at the end of a horizontal line there should be <clears throat> there should be a sync uh, pulse uh, coming up, a horizontal sync. Um, but I don't think that any of this is bad be because we don't have any sync problems. The screen is uh, perfectly working all right. But Another thing, uh, we can see the uh, the H9 signal not going into this one, but also there's a pathway do going down here. And then it's splitting up again. And we, as we can follow this trace, we can see that there's actually one, two, uh, three, uh, four, four logic gates, which have the H9 signal as an input. So any of these is, um, has probably something to do, any of these signal paths have uh, something to do maybe with um, the deactivation of the video output at the end of the line. Okay, I already some found something very interesting. Um, the H9 signal goes into this end gate, which uh, is uh, in IC39. Uh, the H9 signal goes to the pin number two and pin number one has another signal. Output is pin three. So we look at IC39 and we see 
Well, one input signal is toggling. Second, which is H9, is actually toggling also. Toggling also. Output is low. And it is actually low all the time. I have a you know a memory function here at the logic pro if i press this the light uh, which was um, which was uh, on just a second ago is now turned off and if this signal would you know only for a very really small amount uh, of time turn to one and then then turn back to zero then this would light this this light would indicate that there has been a, a change um, at the, the output at some point but even this doesn't happen so this this output is low all the time so two wiggling signals going into an end gate and the output is always low uh, very likely to be a malfunction actually because the horizontal signal uh, the uh, the h9 signal is a signal which is of course not dependent on the state of the cpu this will be um, this will be toggle toggling regularly all the time and also um, uh, let me see where are we here uh, the other um, input comes from a flip-flop. Flip-flop seems to be working. I checked that. And the inputs to the flip-flop are also, you know, other clock, sig uh, clock signals and uh, H4. So these are all regular signals, which are not really depending on any special events happening in the game or whatever. So uh, it is completely, uh, it would be completely pointless to to you know establish this kind of circuit if this, this uh, output would always be low in the regular operation of the game all the time so very um, likely to be problematic um, with the uh, with the output of this gate always uh, being low there's another gate after that which is also an end gate so if this is low all the time the output of this uh, end gate is also low all the time and this is another signal, it is called INN00, which is going to the logic PCB, which is generated from that. This, this signal, as a result of all of this, is low all the time, pretty pointless. And I already checked. Um, the signal actually enters the schematics of the logic PCB around here. And then it goes to uh, these chips, which I think are some multiplexers also, which are actually toggling or switching inputs for the for the video data. So, you know, the signal going in up here, I, I, I bet you this is some kind of chip select or a chip enable signal. So this all makes uh, total sense. But we could actually double check uh, our, our theory if this is a problem. We could look at the uh, working CPU C PCB and look at the signals there if they are uh, any different or if uh, output 3 is toggling there also. Okay, I switched over uh, to the working PCB and as you can see the glitch is not uh, visible here. And if you look um, at the PCB and especially at IC39, uh, you can see that um, in the case of this PCB, the input signals are toggling as well. But here, the output of the gate is also toggling. So this uh, <clears throat> actually underlines... Um, our theory that uh, the gate 39 is bad on the uh, other PCB. Okay, so I uh, replaced IC39. This is the old one I took from the board and uh, hooked it up back to the vertical monitor. So let's have a look. <coughs> Oh, game is running. 
and I don't see any any of the garbage. Well, great. Oh, very nice. Let's just see. Say the game actually works. Sound works, gameplay is fine, and well, I see no more graphical glitches. Well, amazing. Very nice. So, okay, a great success so far, I would say. We got um, uh, one. Uh, out of the whole lot of 12 PCBs, we have one working logic board. We got the uh, this uh, working CPU board, which was just working after replacing uh, the CPU. This logic board worked right from the spot, actually, without any work. Yes, and now we have this uh, third board, this uh, CPU uh, board, which also works now. So one uh, game is complete and one extra CPU board. Next thing would be to uh, restore this board, which is at the moment just missing the program EEPROM. So I have to um, order some EEPROMs and program the um, game's code on the EEPROMs. Maybe put them in and see if we have any problems with this board at all. If we're lucky, maybe it will turn out to just uh, work fine as well. Um, Yes, and we also got still got the uh, Pleiades boards, with, which uh, we will try to repair. But uh, for the sake of uh, the length of this video, I will uh, end the session for now, I think. So a uh, great success so far. In the next bit, we will probably be looking into this, um, into this logic PCB. So we have two complete sets uh, or two complete board sets uh, for Phoenix. Well, but for now, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching. Uh, and uh, as always, if you like my videos, uh, it would be very nice if you could uh, subscribe to, uh, to my channel, leave a thumbs up, maybe uh, click the bell, maybe tell your friend, friends about my repairs. And if you have any co comments, any questions, um, uh, please uh, post them uh, below the video. I will be uh, very hap happy to to help you uh, if I can. So again, thank you very much. Bye for now.